Hey, yeah, I'm Chris Roth, the professional prospector, and today we're going to talk about how to find gold on hard pan. Now, most of you guys are probably familiar with the idea that gold works its way down to bedrock, where it gets settled into crevices and cracks and that kind of stuff. And hey, that's true. But there are times, like this area around me, where gold settles out on what is effectively a hard surface that the gold can't penetrate on down through. A surface that doesn't wear away. Now, when you hear noise in the background, I'm at the site of an active mine in Alaska, so pardon any machine noise or backup beeping and that kind of stuff, because I'm out here metal detecting with my gold monster. The gold here is really quite small, and so the gold monster is the right choice. And it settles out onto a clay or a sand type surface, which is hard pan. It's what's known as a false bedrock. It's really not a solid rock, but it's a solid enough surface that the gold can't penetrate down any further. And that's what I've been doing, is working this surface and the miners come in here, there's gravel above, and I'll show you pictures of that. Uh, there's gravel above the hard pan, and actually the gold is best on the lowest layer of the gravel that sits right on the hard pan. What happened was, millions of years ago, or nah, not really that long, probably many thousands of years ago, uh, the gravels from a stream flowed through here, and the, the gravels here are rounded river type gravels, and they worked their way down until they got to this hard clay surface that they just didn't go any further. And that's a hard pan. Sometimes a hard pan actually solidifies in a lot of desert areas. You have a, a thing called caliche, which is basically cemented gravel. Gravel where limestone has leached through and redeposited, and you end up with this cemented gravel called caliche. But it once was a regular gravel, just like any other gravel, but because it's now a hard surface, gold won't penetrate through it. But clay, heavy layers of clay, often form this hard surface that gold can't get down through. It just doesn't work its way you know, from the flowing waters any further than this hard clay surface. I used to dredge in California years ago, back when dredging was legal, and one of my favorite places to dredge, uh, it had a shallow layer of sand, and then underneath the sand and, and gravel and, and smaller rocks was a layer of clay. And it took me a couple of times because I thought, well, if I could go through this layer of clay, I could get down to the real bedrock and the real bedrock would be better. Well, I worked hard and cut through the clay and got down to that real bedrock, the solid bedrock of the mountain, and there was not very much gold on it, only very little. But there was actually pretty decent gold on the clay. So I learned that it would be better for me in my dredging, and this can apply to you not just with dredging, but with whatever gravels you're digging. Uh, for high banking or sluicing or anything like that, and dredging if you're in a place where dredging is legal, like here in Alaska. Uh, if you get down to a clay layer and there's good gold on the false bedrock, the clay layer, you may be best just to go down that far. And that's what I learned when I was dredging at that particular spot in California. I would literally go down about 18 inches to that clay surface, vacuum the surface of the clay off really well, and then just expand my hold. I would go out to the sides. I wouldn't go down deeper because it was a lot of work to get through the clay. And here, the same thing. The miners, of course, they're not mining with a dredge. They have a big excavator, and the excavator has come in here, and you can kind of see where it's cut holes, and basically, he wants to, the operator wants to cut down to the, the layer that is the, the hard pan, the false bedrock, the layer that gold can't get any further because that's the richest layer that the gold is, is concentrated on. It's at the bottom, just like on bedrock. You know, gold will concentrate on bedrock. Well, this is like, hard pan is like bedrock. And the gold will work its way down as it's flowing in the gravels 
and when it gets down to this lower layer that it can't go through then that's where the gold will concentrate so I want you guys when you're out prospecting think about hard pan keep that in your mind learn this lesson because it can help you find more gold it can help you be more successful in your prospecting is to be able to recognize a hard pan layer when you come across it now sometimes uh, there's also weathered bedrock that becomes like a hard pan I've also been prospecting in other places where uh, the gold was concentrated on what was originally bedrock but the bedrock is so weathered it's so long since those gravels have flowed in the stream that the underlying bedrock has weathered and it's soft like this like this sand and clay is and but still it was when the gold deposited that layer was hard and so the gold couldn't go any farther and came to rest so recognize these kind of hard pan false bedrock uh, weathered bedrock uh, gravel interface because it can lead to you're finding a lot of gold now today I'm out with my gold monster 1000 as I mentioned and I'm going around this pit and like I say the the operator is trying to get just to the layer where the gold is concentrated and no farther because once you get below the layer where the gold is concentrated there is no more gold and you don't want to mine a whole bunch of sand and clay and material that doesn't have any gold in it because you'll run that through your plant and you won't get anything for it you'll get a big nada so he wants to dig down just to that layer it's hard to do because it isn't always obvious and it isn't perfectly smooth like a, a, a tabletop so he digs down to where he thinks and of course with a big excavator it's not like a surgeon's tool where you're you know you have to be cutting within a millimeter uh, he just tries to judge it as closely as possible and sometimes he's successful and, and sometimes not uh, sometimes he leaves a little bit of gold in the ground so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some targets and show you me taking out some nuggets from this false bedrock hard pan okay so I have one I found I've, I've wandered around and one of the things that I want to mention about hard pan and whether you're prospecting uh, for sluicing or high banking or dry washing or whether you're using the metal detector you know hard pan concentrates gold but it also concentrates other heavy materials including hot rocks and so when you're in a, an environment like this uh, you're gonna find an awful lot of zippy loud hot rocks and so I, I am using my discrimination on my uh, gold monster and I actually have a video if you're interested in that I'll, I'll put a link to it about discriminating so to help you deal with hot rocks and ground noise and that kind of stuff and actually clay in itself it can be a, a loud ground noise clay can absorb salts and so can be in part conductive and so you can get loud uh, uh, you know noisy clay with uh, especially with a BLF so here's my target it's kind of giving a wapu pop kind of sound wapu wapu anyway it the detector's pretty sure that this is a non-ferrous target and uh, it just so happens that there just isn't a lot of other because this is a newly dug pit uh, there isn't you know bird shot and other things that you might find in a pit okay oh and then the other thing is because it's a mine I have steel toed boots which are a real bad choice for um, real bad choice for metal detecting but required by the the mining uh, regulators so let's see if I can get this target Okay, it seems like I've got it in my spoon. Let's get our detector set up. Okay. 
let's see what we got. Yep, it's definitely in the spoon. Yep, still in the spoon. One of the things about prospecting in wet conditions like this is, you know, your sorting spoon, you pour stuff out of it. It just doesn't pour so well when it's wet and clawed, you know, dirt clawed and that. Still in the spoon. Oh, I see it. It's gold. And here it is, a little flake of gold right there. So I'll get you a picture of it closer up. But hard pan can be a very productive source of gold. And as long as you understand it and know how to recognize it, you're a better prospector. So be a better prospector. Keep hard pan and false bedrock and weathered bedrock and other ideas like that in your head because it'll prevent you. I've seen plenty of guys, you know, they don't recognize hard pan. They don't recognize false bedrock. They don't recognize weathered bedrock. And they just keep on digging, hoping to find something that's solid. And actually they've done some drill testing in this area and the hard bedrock, the real hard bedrock is down something like 180 feet. And that's just too far to dig a hole. And no metal detector is going to see down that deep. So knowing that the gold is on hard pan can help you find more and be more successful and end up with more gold in your bottle. So just as a quick aside before I finish off this video, I want to say that you know, with false bedrock and other type things like this, it's a lot like regular bedrock in the sense that if you have the geologic conditions, the water conditions, the river bend conditions that are going to lay down one piece of gold, well, it's likely that it'll lay down more than one piece of gold. So you always want to check your hole after you're done. And just after I turned off the camera a second ago, I went over my hole. And sure enough, I got two more targets and pulled out two more flakes of gold. So that's another lesson that you want to know as far as, uh, as false bedrock, hard pan, caliche, weathered bedrock, all these types of situations is that gold occurs in patches. And it's true, it's true for regular bedrock too. And so always check your hole and check carefully. Um, you know, you're gonna see that heavy materials tend to accumulate in the same space and that includes both gold and things like iron minerals and, and other heavy minerals, hot rocks and that sort of thing. But always check your hole because it'll lead to more gold. <laughs> I think that's another one. Let's dig it. It's definitely another one. Might as well take it. You find more flakes and end up with more gold. Okay. Still there. Still there. Yeah. Still there.
Well, maybe that hot rock was our our target. Still there. Just moved it around, I think, moving that rock. <laughs> Getting to be quite an excavation. It definitely seems like it's gold. It's real sure it's gold now. Alright, finally in the scoop, after much messing around. One of the skills of being a good metal detector operator is to be able to get your target in the spoon and out of the ground relatively quickly. And I've actually done a video on that. That's another one you might want to take a look at. And this was more of a dig than you might expect, but I got the target. It's in there. All right. Definitely in the scoop again. In the scoop. In my hand. That's making a nice whop and pop sound. Oh, there's the gold. After all that work, another flake. You can see with these flakes. How easy it is to kind of shove them around you're digging a hole and you know you're moving material and before you know it you've taken a, a little flake and you've shoved it all around in the hole that's why digging out holes for little tiny targets it's a little bit tougher it's not as easy but as you can see by scanning this hole multiple times I've gotten several decent little flakes and like I say they add up so I thought in finishing, I'd show you guys the gold that I got up there in Alaska by metal detecting. As you can see by looking at it, uh, it's a lot of pieces. And in fact, I counted them all up and there's 179 pieces of gold that I was able to get with my metal detector. But the total weight for these, because as I mentioned in the video, they're kind of small. The total weight is only 5.17 grams, which... Again, is a good find. Five grams of gold is great. 
but uh, for 179 pieces, you might expect a little more. But you can see on the picture that some of these pieces are really small, and that's a testimony to how small a gold that the Gold Monster 1000 can see. It really is quite a, a sensitive detector. The biggest piece is the piece that's kind of in the middle there. It looks a little darker and a little more lumpy. Uh, it's actually more nugget shaped. All the rest of them are flakes of one thickness or another. The one in the middle weighs 0 0.2 grams. So it would take five of those to make a one gram piece of gold. Anyway, this is a, the kind of gold I was getting on the hard pan there. And I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. And every piece, honestly, was an excitement to find. And I really enjoyed myself. Now, if you're interested in learning to be able to find gold like this, or, of course, much larger sizes as well, be able to find nice gold as a prospector and learn the skills of prospecting for gold, well, I wrote a book to help people with that, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my prospecting book right now. So let me tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, it's called Fistful of Gold. And I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself this full of gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed. And so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine. It's ICMJ's Prospecting and Mining Journal. And honestly, you should check that out. We've got stories uh, and information, legal stuff, everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector. I write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well. So check the magazine out. Also, I have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.